Good evening, I'm Jim Whaley. Tonight on Cinema Showcase, my guest is one of the world's foremost cinematographers, Mr. Ernest Laszlo. His films include Stalag 17, Inherit the Wind, It's a Mad, 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 Mad World, Ship of Fools, which brought him an Academy Award, and Airports. Tonight, a look at the world of cinematography with my guest, Ernest Laszlo, on Cinema Showcase. Good evening and welcome to tonight's program. Mr. Laszlo, I want to thank you for taking this time to talk with me. It's my pleasure. We are here, I want to mention, in the, the clubhouse, is it, of the American, American Society, Society of Cinematographers. Of Cinematographers. Let's talk for just a moment about the, the International Cinematographers Conference. It has brought together, here in Hollywood, some of the most well-known photographers in the world. Uh, what is the, the International Convention, and how did it get started? Well, uh, as you probably know, that uh, Filmex, uh, uh, the very first year, they had uh, honored the directors. The second year, they honored the writers. Now, thirdly, it was the uh, directors of photography. Uh, third year, it was the directors of photography. So we had uh, quite a bit of preliminary work to work out what the program should be, and uh, we selected certain pictures, and uh, old and new, and... Uh, I was uh, very, very much surprised, you know, when the thing opened, uh, the interest mm -hmm. that's shown by the young people yeah. in this ex exposition. So I, as president of the American Society of Cinematographers, I was chosen against my better judgment to open <laughs> up my <laughs> open up the exhibition. So uh, I tried to uh, explain what. Uh, the functions of a director of photography is. Also, I want to tell people how this thing came about. I might uh, go into it, and I say in 1918, a group of, of cinematographers decided to uh, form a club where they could exchange their ideas how to improve on cinematography. Mm -hmm. They adopted as their motto Loyalty, progress, and artistry. Also, they coined a phrase, give us the place to stand on and we'll photograph the world. Now, our ASC member astronauts, Neil Armstrong, Edwin Aldrin, and Mike Collins, proven just that, they <laughs> photographed the world. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Also, at the very beginning, uh, our member, pioneer members, did not have the sophisticated equipment mm -hmm. that we now have. So they had to be inventive and know how to uh, improvise. I would like to give a few examples of the, sure. of the uh, ingenuity. Well, in 1912, Ernie Palmer has doing a, was doing a picture in China, and he, he wanted to make a moving shot. So he put himself and his camera on a platform and had six Chinese coolies carry him, thus making it possible the first moving shot. <laughs> it could also have been one of the first handheld camera <laughs> shot b done by six pairs of Chinese <laughs> coolie hands. And some of these French photographers thought they were the first ones to use a handheld camera. <laughs> right. Now, uh, also, I'd like to mention that uh, uh, or in 1911, Joe Walker uh, experimented in wireless. Mm -hmm. In 1912, he installed a wireless transmitter into an airplane, and it was the Wright Brothers airplane. Now, in addition, he has built his own motion picture lenses, wide-angle lenses, portrait lenses. He invented the uh, uh, diffusion disc mm -hmm. and so on. And, so. and his most notable invention was uh, the zoom lens, mm -hmm. which uh, if and when it, it's handled right, it's a great piece of equipment. But it's it, used too often, isn't it? In my opinion, <laughs> it surely has been abused. Now, uh, how, no, excuse me. 
Hal Moore. Mm -hmm. Now, I'd like to talk, uh, just say a few words about Hal Moore. You, one day, he decided to, uh, to uh, clean up the Barbary Coast in San Francisco. Hal wanted to do a documentary of the last night closing. So he used discarded uh, street la arc lamps to light it. Now, in addition, Hal has photographed the, in 1927 the first successful uh, talking pictures, the jazz singer. Mm -hmm. In 1929, he uh, designed and had them built what they call a Broadway a crane which was the forerunner of all the cranes that we're having now. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, he photographed Midsummer Night's Dream, although the picture was not nominated for Academy Award. The Academy members thought otherwise. This was the first time in the history of the Academy that an Academy Award was given by writing Votes. It's one of the only times, isn't yes, it? Yes, one of the only it's times. Only yes. mm -hmm. You have, have photographed many great films, and if I may say, your photography has helped to make many of them great. And I would like to talk about some of them uh, in just a moment. But first, how did your interest in films begin? Well, it's, uh, it's not a really a long story. I, uh, you know, I came to this country. Um, uh, I was born in Hungary, mm -hmm. and uh, when I did come to this country, I could not speak a word of English. Consequently, I had to uh, go to work <laughs> while I'm... So I had a job. Uh, I hope this is not too long. No. Uh, <laughs> I had a job in an ornamental iron factory. I was getting $2 a day, and... and a Hungarian friend of mine said, well, you can, I can get you $4 if you <laughs> go and work for uh, uh, the Pioneer Paper uh, Factory or whatever. So I did. Then I played soccer football. I belonged to the Los Angeles Athletic Club, and uh, the manager offered me a job at $6 a week. But all, of the, all this time, I was waiting and learning how to speak English. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to get into the motion picture business. So uh, finally, I felt that I could, uh, you know, I could make myself understood. I got a job at uh, Christie Comedies at $20 a week and unlimited hours. So that was the beginning. And uh, I would like to really, what I would like to emphasize here is that. You really, if you want to become anybody in this country, mm -hmm. in this wonderful country of ours, you can be anybody if you are willing to work hard. And uh, I was ambitious as a young guy. Didn't care about the hours, you know. But I just wanted to learn my profession. Yeah. So, from the system, being an assistant director, finally in 1930, I was. Uh, I got a job as an operator, and I was at Paramount for uh, as an operator for 13 years, and I have just about given up hopes <laughs> that I would uh, ever become a first camera man. Mm -hmm. So finally, the break came, and I also want to say want something else that for a young man who wants to become a director of photography. Again, you have to work hard. You have to have imagination. And you just about have to, when you assign to a picture, and you, you read a script, you just about have to, in your mind, ah, you know, you have to see just about what you want to accomplish. How do you mm -hmm. want to photograph this thing? So anyway, I, uh, and also, be sure that you're ready when you get the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So I had, I was hoping that I was ready. <laughs> and uh, maybe I was. <laughs> so anyway, I did uh, the first year I did some army films. Then finally I was given a break and uh, due to uh, Miss John Farrow, who uh, finally decided that maybe I'll 
be able to do this picture. So my first picture was the Hitler Gang. And it was a very exciting assignment, not only because it was the first picture, but it was a, a reasonable big picture. What year, in fact, was the, uh, the Hitler Gang shot? What year? It was in 1945. And I, I kind of like to tell you uh, my experience. You know, the very first morning of the beginning of the shooting, I generally get there at 8 o'clock, you know, or we're supposed to start shooting at 9, you know. So we had a shot at, uh, where we'd open up on an insert of a hand writing a name. And the name happened to be Adolf Schickelgruber. Mm -hmm. So then we pull back, we pull back and we pan over and we find out that we are in a hospital, big, big hospital with a lot of people naturally in beds and everything like that. And uh, sunlight streaming in the windows and uh, with the breeze uh, blowing the curtains and so on and so forth. So then we pick up a doctor and we follow the doctor to a bed where a man lies in bed with his eyes uh, closed, naturally, and so on and so forth. And uh, it's uh, camera follows this uh, doctor to the bed, and it's uh, Hitler. Uh -huh. And then a doctor gets up, and he uh, meets another doctor, and they talk about the case, and so on and so forth. So that is that was the shot. Now, I started at 8 o'clock in the morning, and by the time we got the shot, it was 3 o'clock in the morning. I mean, in the afternoon, uh -huh. pardon me. So I was thinking, you know, this could not only be your first picture, but <laughs> it could be the last, you know, taking this much time. But fortunately, the shot worked out so well yeah. that uh, also I must say that uh, on this particular picture, we, Mr. Farrell was a man who uh, wanted to be on a boom all the time. <laughs> And his reason was that if he makes a shot on a boom and covers a whole sequence, then there's no way for, after he leaves the picture, for the film editor to cut, because there's nothing to cut to. Uh -huh. So that is one reason why. A little why insurance there. Yes, yes. So uh, we have done some very, very exciting shot, including a 360-degree shot of the Munich Beer Hall, mm -hmm. and a uh, lot, lot of, lot of, lot of interesting shots. Before I, I want to ask yes. you about some of your other films, let me first ask you, though, to define, if you would, what a director of photography does on a film. He does not, in fact, sit peering through the camera. Uh, in right. fact, he doesn't operate the camera, does he? Uh, no. I would, uh, you want me to go, uh, are just, we just on camera now? Yeah. Oh. Uh, well, I would like to really, uh, you know, uh, tell you what the functions of a director of photography is. Number one is uh, you are assigned to do a picture. Now, you are given a script. After reading the script, you have several conferences with the director, and you decide in what manner or style the picture should be shot. And after you meet the art director, and you talk over the sets. Also, you want to be sure that the art director does not build the sets too close to the <laughs> studio walls, because generally you have day interiors. Mm -hmm. Now, in order to uh, uh, photograph day interiors, you have to simulate sunlight coming in the room. Now, if you don't have in a room to put your lights, you know, then then you lick. Also, you have to uh, talk over what the art director is, what uh, walls should be removable, ceilings, and then you talk the color scheme over to fit the picture. Then the next thing, you meet with the uh, costume designer, a wardrobe, talk about fabrics, colors, and uh, the very first question that they ask you, it's, it's 
kind of like it's funny to me is can you can you photograph white? That's their question. That's what they're mostly interested in. Mm -hmm. Then you go to makeup and talk to, with the makeup people and uh, you know decide uh, talk to cast over who needs what kind of a makeup, little makeup, no makeup, or lots of makeup. Then most pictures have uh, exteriors. Then you go with the director and production designer and production manager and select the locations. You may have to go two or three different times to really finalize uh, what locations would fit the picture. Mm -hmm. Then comes the day when the production <laughs> begins. So uh, your crew in, uh, consists of all the electricians, the grit, uh, property man and uh, uh, set uh, decorators. Mm -hmm. Then the director's rehearse, director rehearses the scene. Then he and I would uh, decide on the camera setups. Then he leaves, and from that point on, it's up to the director of photography to do his work. And mm -hmm. also, uh, he is responsible for every single frame that goes through that camera. So it's up to you to speed things along? Right. It's, it's up to, uh, really up to the director of photography to, uh, to see that we can uh, uh, proceed. And he has to do his work as, as, as quickly and well as possible. Because the assistant director is waiting in the wings mm -hmm. for <laughs> you to tell him that he, you're ready to shoot. Suppose the director says he wants a particular shot. But as the director of photography, you tell him photographically that's impossible. Has that ever happened? It, it, it does happen. As a matter of fact, it happened uh, maybe quite a few times on this thing. Uh -huh. Well, it all depends on the director. I can only advise him, you know, whether it's good or not. Uh -huh. Now, the director is really the boss of the, the company, so if he insists upon it, I do my very best to, to do it. It's, yeah as well as I can. Is it best to have a good director uh, photographer relationship? I mean, can you work with a director you don't like? Or I can, but I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, really, I've been very, very fortunate mm -hmm. uh, with people that I worked with, with certain directors. Well, you know, first of all, you know, you need a director that has confidence in mm -hmm. you. And if you have if the director has confidence in you, then it's very easy going, you know. And as a matter of fact, at times, a director will come and, you know, rehearse a scene. And then, I, naturally, I watch, it, watch the scene with him. And then he comes to me and he says, well, Ernie, how do you want to do this, you know? Without getting any advice from the director. And, of course, we appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It does something to our ego. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When did you do uh, a film I enjoyed? I think you did this for John Farrell, two years before The Mask. Well, that was that followed uh, The Ship of Fools. And yeah. uh, it, again, was <laughs> a very interesting picture. We had, uh, you know, it's all about uh, this ship. We had two ships built. And both, one was outside and the other one was inside. The, the reason we had a, uh, we had this other ship inside because that was our process stage, and at times, you know, particularly for night shots, mm -hmm. we needed a process place, and also for day shots. Day shots, we generally go out on a lot, and to the sea, we're all uh, on, uh, oh, you know, this, we're able to tip them up and down, and so on and so forth, and uh, we had some. Very interesting shots. I don't know what I should tell you about. The there was that, one you were describing to me earlier, which yes. is fascinating, and it perfectly illustrates a point I have made several times, and that is the directors and photographers in the 40s and 50s, it seems to me, like to move their cameras an awful lot. And to me, that's exciting. Well, uh, Mr. Farrell is, was well known for uh -huh. his love of boom shots, and, and, and I explained just... Uh, why he wanted to make these things. Yeah. Well, this particular shot was, uh, it has to do with a man who's looking for the arrival of the ship. Now, he sees the ship, 
So he gets on his horse. So we start the shot by on the horse's hoof, and then we pan around, and we find ourselves on Boston Street, which is quite a quite a long, well-designed street. Then we follow him. He dismounts and ties his horse up, and we leave him. And on the second story, we have the ship owner looking out the window, waiting for the arrival of this man. Mm -hmm. So the camera keeps on moving in and in and in. So finally we get the waist figure. He turns. And as he turns, the camera follows him. However, you know, in order to get the camera in, into this room, we had to, the wall had to be removed. Well, he dictates to his uh, secretary. In the meanwhile, the horseman arrives and he reports on the arrival of the ship. So the ship owner turns, goes into the, his outer office. Now, in order to get it into his outer office, we had to move the wall. So we get in a very close shot uh, of the ship owner. And then meanwhile, the wall moves out, and we're in his out, outer office. Then uh, after having about 10 different uh, setups, we finally wind up on the uh, model of the ship, and from this model, we dissolve into the real ship. Fascinating. I want to jump ahead here about 15 years, I think, to a film which I greatly admire of yours, and that's Ship of Fools. The acting by Simone Signore and Oscar Werner is brilliant and has brought you an Academy Award. Was it a, a particularly difficult film to shoot? Well, it was uh, a difficult film. The reason it was difficult because, uh, as you know, that the story takes place, well, ship leaves Veracruz and goes to Brandon mm -hmm. And now we're in the studio, and uh, the, the sh ship is built on stage six, and there's no movement of the ship whatsoever. So we had to create the illusion that we we're at sea. Now, in order to create the illusion, I had uh, the backing, the sky backings with the horizon line on pulleys, and slowly we were moving up and down to, to uh, make people believe that we were really. And I, uh, the only time we were ever outside when we went from Los Angeles to Honolulu to shoot some background plates. And uh, the rest of the time, the whole picture was, <coughs> excuse me, shot in, on, on, on at one stage. You have had a, a very good relationship with Stanley Kramer. I think you've done, what, four of his films? Well, I've done four, four of his, a uh, little more than four, four mm -hmm. of his films. You must enjoy working with him. I really, I think he's one of the finest gentlemen in, well, I was uh, to mention George Seaton yes, to work with. Stanley is, uh, is a very brilliant, bright man, mm -hmm. and uh, he and I just got along real great, and uh, the first picture that I've done with him, Inherit the Wind, I enjoyed tremendously on account of uh, these two tremendous actors, Spencer Tracy and Frederick March, and we again had some some movement. Of, he likes to move the camera also. Mm -hmm. There was a scene in Inherit the Wind where we photographed eight and a half minutes until just about we ran out of the uh, thousand foot magazines, you know. So, I understand that people would come from all over the studio just to watch Tracy and, and March with their acting battles, so to speak. Oh, it was, uh, <coughs> to me, it was really uh, an unbelievable experience. Yeah. Uh, Let's uh, talk about George Seaton, who uh, directed Airport, and you did his, uh, his latest film, Showdown, which didn't turn out didn't quite turn as well. Out. Let's talk about airport then. Was that a, a challenge for you? Well, airport was a, a, a well, you know, everything is a challenge. You might say, mm -hmm. you know, every picture is different, you know, different style. But airport was particularly uh, difficult. The reason is that you know that uh, the whole picture takes five and a half hours, you know, in time-wise. I don't mean footage-wise, mm -hmm. but and it's done at, during a, a blizzard. Now, in night time, so in order to, uh, uh, you know, we had to go to uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul, to photograph the picture, and it, 
we uh, in February, which is, uh, I assure you, it's a very <laughs> February and March, we photograph then, it's, it's very cold. And every scene, 99% of the pictures was done at night. And that meant that every single scene I had to light. Now that included the runways air, uh, at the airport and whatever. So the temperature at some night was 36 below zero. And at first we had some problems uh, with the cameras, mm -hmm. uh, you know, not freezing up and everything. And in, the, in addition, even in Minneapolis, St. Paul, you don't get snow every single night. Yeah. So consequently, we had to put our own snow in, which required <laughs> uh, these enormous forklifts mm -hmm. with drums and wind machines to create our own snow. And we, in addition to the scenes, I had to light the snow, otherwise it doesn't pick up. So uh, it was quite an exciting experiment, but uh, I loved every minute of it. I want to thank you very much for taking this time to talk with me. Our time is up, but uh, maybe I can come back again and we can talk about some of the other films. I'll be delighted to talk about Thank them. you very much. My thanks to all of you for watching. Be with me again next time. Good night. <laughs>